Now that you have all your screws removed, just pull up on the bracket, the upper bracket, and you can take it off. The next step is to pull the cards apart, and they should all come apart. Now, I already did this before, and I should have mentioned it, but a good idea is to scribe the number of the carb, that's my first, onto the body, just so you remember where they go when you put them back on the rack. And there you can see a number two, if the camera wants to focus, right there. The next step is to flip the carb over so you can see where the butterfly is in and get a better view at that. This is what you want to see. And you want to mark it with a sharpie, handy dandy sharpie, on the butterfly. And you want to mark which number carb it goes to. And you also want to mark which way is up with an arrow. So I'll do it real quick and I'll show you what I mean. Which way it opens up. Let this dry real quick. And that's what it'll look like. Number one and which way it goes up and you're going to want to do it for the rest of them as well. So, two, up. There's your number two, and it going up. Number three. And there's your number three, and the way it goes, up, and last but not least, your number four. And which way it goes, which is up. Now that your carbs are all apart, separate, you're going to look on your number one carb and look for this little e-clip right here. And to get that off, to get that off, take a small flathead. just wiggle it off very lightly you don't want to bend it and it should just pop right off set that aside and then there's also a shim on there you don't need a screwdriver for this part you can just pull that right off and there you go Your next step is to unlock the spring from the throttle shaft, and that is located, let's see if I can get a good view of this, this spring right here, that one. And to do this, I take a needle nose pliers and grab the tip of it, let's see if we can see this happen hold on to it and you're going to want to pull it right out of there so it's out
All right, so <clears throat> there's something I wanted to show you, and I had to, I had to do a lot of uh, experimentation, let's call it, to get the screws out of the butterflies. Um, now, there's a couple of warnings that I wanted to give you on that subject because um, with the Makuni carbs, the way these are put in here, it, it is a real bear to get them out. Um, now, from what I've heard, if you have an XJ or an FJ, a Yamaha XJ or FJ, um, and you have the Hitachi carbs, they're not as bad. But I'm sure this warning would go for both of them, but especially for the Makuni carburetors. The screws that hold the butterflies in are very, very soft, okay? Um, and what that means is that the heads are really easy to strip. I don't know if you can see that one that I've got left in here. Um, it is mangled to death. Um, however, I did find um, a lot of good documentation on how to get these out, and the one mistake that I did make before I tried to loosen these up was um, you need to file the backs off. Now, the reason for that, and is I'd, I'd love to show you this, but I can't because I already have this one filed off. But what they do is when they install them it, at the factory, they they what they call peen them, meaning that they crush the back end of the screw so that it doesn't have a tendency to um, uh, wheel its way out or vibrate its way out. So <clears throat> I want to give you a close-up view if we can to see the back end of the screws because what you have to do is before you even try to remove that screw, the best possible thing that you can do is file the back end of this screw down. So hopefully I can show you that, um, get a little bit more light. And maybe you can see how I've filed this screw down to flush. And you may think that you don't need to go all the way down to flush, you need to just get that first thread off. But your best possible bet is to, is to file that sucker down all the way to flush. That way there's no possibility that any of the threads that are remaining are peened over. They may not look like they're squashed, but they are. So then, once you do that, once you file the back end down, and I'm saying that a thousand times because you really need to, then you can go back to the front side and attempt to get the screw out. Um, now, it, these are also Japanese standard screws, so they're slightly different than what you might find for an American screwdriver. So, if you do have the chance to get a number two uh, Japanese standard, or what they call a JIS, Japanese Industrial Standard screwdriver. That's probably your best bet as well. Although I was able to get a specially shaped flathead screwdriver in there once I uh, got the screw to start to turn. And uh, just for your satisfaction's sake, I'll show you that I can get this screw out. Or my satisfaction's sake. And there it is. But again, you must file those screws off. I did use a Dremel, but in some cases, so that I could prevent damage, I also used this triangular jeweler's file, um, which, again, the screws are soft, so they do file down fairly easily. It does take some patience, more so if you have a dre than if you have a Dremel, but um, it does work. So there you have it. From there, we'll move on to taking the butterflies out. What bit did you use with the the Dremel? I used actually a diamond bit, a diamond grinding bit that I had, but you could use a uh, uh, what they call a speed metal bit or even a uh, um, a stone of some some sort. You could use like this is a speed a speed grinding bit, um, but even a stone should do the job. Your next step after removing the butterfly valve screws are to push the valve like this and pull the valves out. And you can see I already have all four of them out. Now you want to remove your butterfly shaft on the inside once all your springs are off. This guy right here. And um, I've noticed that on the outside carbs they're held on by little E-clips and take those off, just grab a flathead screwdriver and just wiggle it off. And, 
and then you also want to take a little washer off that's on there and you can actually slide that shaft right out now for the inside too there's nuts on there and I already have this one loosened but you just want to unscrew that take the washer off mine was a little stuck but I gave it a little tap and it comes right out Next, it's a good idea to mark your throttle shafts to correspond with each carburetor and butterfly. Now your carbs are completely disassembled, and the next step is to clean them. Clean them. Clean them. Clean them. Clean them. Clean them. And did I mention clean them? You've already made it this far. You don't want to cut corners. And I know you're excited to put them all back together and get them on your bike but you need to clean them. Clean them. Here's a before and after shot of soaking your carbs. This is before. And here's after. Okay, so now we're going on to reassembly, and on the first carb, we, um, we replaced the shim, which is in this end right here. And then from there, um, we put a new seal in place, put the spring on, if you could point the spring out, and then reinserted the shaft. And then on the other side, we put a new seal in, and... This, then in the shim and then right after that a new e-clip and then each of those areas where the seals went in we we lubed with silicone grease so that those seals will be preserved and stay nice and fresh and then lastly we put the butterfly back in making sure our orientation was right with our arrow and inserted new screws complete with Loctite to make sure that they don't come flying out and go flying into the engine and now this carburetor is ready for the next step.